Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it really is my joy to visit with you again. Just a quick update. Uh, Dee is uh, continuing to recover at home. Uh, so glad for your prayers. Um, the recovery is slow. Uh, still need prayers for strength um, and renewing of her appetite, but uh, saw the doctor yesterday and things are going well. So uh, thank you for your ongoing prayers. Continue to pray, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see her in church on Sunday. I um, want to share with you today uh, a short devotional. I um, want us to think together about the following two verses of Scripture that get lived and how they get lived out in our lives. The first verse comes from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. And then the second verse comes from Luke 24, verse 48. You, you are my witnesses of these things. Now, when we put these two things together, it says that we are witnesses of what God has done and we are his children. And my question is, do people see evidence that we are God's children? Do people see us witnessing in our lives to the fact that we have understood the gospel and that we are his children? Now, my devotion today is intentionally rather remarkably simple, but you know, my contention is that I believe we witness to our faith and show that we are God's children in the little things. And I believe that in the little things, they make such a big difference in the lives of others. This past week, two dear friends made a quick visit to bring D and I, of all things, a Frosty from Wendy's some flowers for D and some homemade jelly. You know, they were thinking about D and, and they acted in a way that offered her encouragement and love as she recovers from her surgery. You know what? It made her smile. Another friend brought us a quart of soup. It was hearty and delicious. And it gave us a simple meal that was so appreciated. Today, as I'm recording this, uh, D's sister Linda has stopped by. It's her second visit since she's been home. She offers to do some things around the house, but what's really important, she's just there visiting with her sister. The help is appreciated, but the visits buoys D spirit. Now, my friends, I'm not trying to make this just about me, but these are examples from, from my life, from our present circumstances. They're also quiet witnesses by each person of Christ's love and compassion and action. They remind all of us of what defines us isn't so much the big things, but those little opportunities in our daily lives. Now think with me for a moment. How could you witness to your faith? How could you extend God's love to somebody today? Well, I think they're the little things that really matter. Maybe you can make a phone call to someone homebound, someone recovering from an illness, or just somebody you know that's going through a tough patch. A listening ear is priceless. Maybe you too could drop off a quart of soup, a meal, or just a simple treat to someone alone or facing a hard time. That tangible act means so much, and it brings a smile to their face. Write a note or a card. D has read every card at least once, if not more. And they have meant so much to her as she struggled to get back on her feet. You know, sometimes our witness is just in offering a practical helping hand. You know, right now, spring cleanup may be too much for a neighbor, friend, or relative. You or a small group could make quick work of a task that is a burden for someone else. And where it makes sense, offer to pray for that person. In my own time of grief, those who took time to pray with me provided such great comfort. Know, my friends, that as you reach out to others, you demonstrate that you are a child of God. You're giving witness to your faith and sharing God's love with others. It is my prayer today that we may all be more intentional about witnessing to our faith in both word and deed. I believe it's what God wants us to do. 
And you know what? In the process, it brings hope into the lives of others. Amen. Some announcements to share with you about Wesley Church and things that are coming up. Uh, this Sunday, we will be back uh, resuming in-person worship in the sanctuary, and we will always continue to live stream our service. For all in-person services, please contact the church by phone or email to reserve your place. Last week, the adult Sunday school class began a new study. Uh, Jeff Miller was leading the study on Max Licato's book, Before Amen. This is a study that will help us to learn to pray better, stronger, and with more fire, faith, and fervency. Sometimes we make prayer harder than it is because, friends, prayer is simply a heart converse, heartfelt conversation between God and yourself. Contact Jeff Miller or Christopher Albright to be included on the online contact list for the class. All are welcome, and I hope you'll consider joining the class. Wesley Preschool is partnering with Duck Donuts in Mechanicsburg for a fundraiser this Sunday, April 18th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Who doesn't love a good donut? So stop by Duck Donuts on Carlisle Pike to help support our preschool. And Wesley Vacation Bible School is going to be held this year from July 18th through the 22nd. We are in the process of building a great uh, leadership team. We still need a few more folks to fill out our team, and if you're able to help, please contact Amy Whitworth. Well, I appreciate that you spent a few moments with me today. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, my prayer is simple. Help all of us to witness to our faith by responding in love and care to those in need. Let us never kid ourselves. Love in action makes a huge difference and gives hope to those struggling. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, thank you for visiting with me today. We'll talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.